the immediate and long-term effects of this exposure were devastating. Many were evacuated too late to avoid the initial radioactive plume. Others continued to live in areas where contamination levels remained dangerously high. Medical studies revealed that the youngest were at the greatest risk of developing serious health problems. Thyroid cancer was just one of the many health issues they faced. Low-level radiation exposure can still continue to affect their health, leading to chronic conditions that impact not only their bodies, but also their psychological well-being. Hello guys, Chernobylite was created to put a lot of emphasis on the human story. There were horror aspects, RPG, fighting and stealth, but the story was the most important part. As a game where sci-fi was naturally a big part of it, we still embodied the real-life versions of buildings, places, monuments. We also made a lot of references to historical and current events. We let you learn more about the history of the Chernobyl disaster through the tour around the zone mode. Overall, the story is purely fictional as no one discovered how to time travel yet, or at least we think so now. But the same story incorporated the real events, sometimes happiness, sometimes sadness, and sometimes personal tragedies. We didn't create the story based on anyone's true experiences, but it was inspired by the grim reality of the disaster, its toll on people's lives, often drastically changed or even ended. In Chernobylite 2, we also put a lot of emphasis on the story, same as in the first game. We will put you in a position where you will have to decide about someone's fate, and your actions will have consequences, often hard to predict. Especially when the sequel will have an open world, where your actions will sometimes be completely unpredictable. Again, this story will be fictional, but nonetheless, we are working hard to make it meaningful. Breaking the fourth wall sometimes means taking inspiration from bad things to create a fictional version of them, to discreetly show you how small decisions or small mistakes can influence many people's lives. Today you will hear about the children of Chernobyl, a group of the youngest people affected by the disaster, and a long introduction to this episode was put there for context. We may have created a sci-fi game with a completely fictional story, but we never forgot the toll of the Chernobyl disaster. It often gave us insights into how even the most innocent of us can be harmed by things out of anybody's control. Let's start. The Children of Chernobyl, Part 1 The Chernobyl disaster on April 26, 1986 was a catastrophic event that unleashed radioactive fallout across Ukraine, Belarus, Russia and beyond, forever altering the lives of millions. Among the most affected were the children who lived in the areas closest to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. These children, some of whom were born before the disaster and others in the years that followed, became known as the children of Chernobyl. Their lives were marked by exposure to high levels of radiation, particularly iodine-131, cesium-134 and cesium-137, which contaminated the food supply, particularly milk, and saturated the environment. The immediate and long-term effects of this exposure on children were devastating. Many were evacuated too late to avoid the initial radioactive plume, and others continued to live in areas where contamination levels remained dangerously high. The children of Chernobyl suffered from increased rates of thyroid cancer, genetic mutations, birth defects, and numerous other health problems. The disaster not only took a physical toll but also left deep emotional scars on the children and their families, as they faced the uncertainty of radiation's long-term effects and the trauma of displacement from their homes and communities. The symbolism of childhood loss to the Chernobyl disaster is a recurring theme in the real-world exploration of the exclusion zone. Personal belongings, especially toys and dolls, left behind by evacuated families, became halting reminders of the life that was abruptly interrupted. Explorers and stalkers, those who ventured into the exclusion zone, would often rearrange these items. Dolls were particularly symbolic, representing innocence lost and the lives forever altered by the disaster. This tragic imagery serving as both a somber reflection of the past and a warning for the future. In real life, the children affected by the Chernobyl disaster faced significant and long-lasting health challenges. 
In the aftermath of the meltdown, over 6,000 cases of thyroid cancer were reported in children who had been exposed to radiation, particularly in regions like Gomel Oblast, Belarus, which experienced the highest levels of fallout. The ingestion of radioactive iodine through contaminated milk and food was a primary factor in the development of these cancers. Medical studies revealed that the youngest children, especially those exposed before the age of 5, were at the greatest risk of developing serious health problems. Thyroid cancer was just one of the many health issues these children faced. Increased rates of genetic mutations and birth defects became a hallmark of the post-disaster period. In Ukraine alone, 6,000 children are born each year with genetic heart defects, a direct consequence of living in areas still affected by Chernobyl's lingering radiation. Birth deformities increased by 200% and many children suffer from poor immune systems, stunted growth, and developmental issues. In addition to physical health problems, mental health issues have plagued the children of Chernobyl. The psychological trauma of living in contaminated areas, being evacuated from their homes, or dealing with the loss of loved ones has contributed to high levels of depression, anxiety, and cognitive impairments. These mental health struggles were exacerbated by the general poverty and lack of medical care in the region, as well as the lingering uncertainty about how long the effects of radiation exposure would last. In many instances, personal items such as dolls and toys were left behind in haste during the evacuations. These artifacts have since been found by explorers and photographers documenting the ruins of Pripyat and other affected areas. Some of the dolls are believed to be original, frozen in time, particularly in places like the Kopachi Kindergarten or Pripyat Hospital, where others have been repositioned or left as tributes by visitors to the exclusion zone. The abandoned toys and children's belongings provide a poignant glimpse into the lives that were abruptly disrupted, standing as symbols of innocence lost to the disaster. Low-level radiation exposure can still continue to affect their health, leading to chronic conditions that impact not only their bodies, but also their psychological well-being. Organizations like Chernobyl Children International have worked to address these ongoing health crises, but the full impact of the disaster remains far from resolved. In Chernobylite, we integrated the symbolism of the lost children of Chernobyl, for example using dolls as powerful narrative tools. In the game, these dolls represent both lost innocence and the untold stories of children whose futures were stolen by the disaster. While some of the dolls in the game are inspired by real ones found in locations such as the Kopachi Kindergarten, Others serve as a deeper, more supernatural purpose in the storyline. Throughout the game, the protagonist, Igor, encounters dolls that are manipulated by mysterious forces to communicate with him. These encounters often bring to the surface themes of loss, memory and trauma, echoes of the real-world experiences of those who were most affected by the disaster. The use of dolls in Chernobylite not only connects you to the eerie atmosphere of the exclusion zone, but also serves as a poignant reminder of the children whose lives were forever changed. The dolls act as symbols of the stolen futures of the children who were meant to grow up in Pripyat, a city once full of life and promise, but now abandoned and haunted by the legacy of Chernobyl. By incorporating these symbols into Chernobylite, we brought a deeply human element to the narrative, transforming the dolls into vessels of memory, grief and loss. For you, the players, these moments serve as a reminder that the disaster was not only a technological failure, but also a human tragedy that reverberates across generations. Despite this being a quite sad episode due to the subject, I hope you enjoyed learning about the children of Chernobyl and how we incorporated this and similar stories into the atmosphere of Chernobylite 1 and Chernobylite 2. Remember that you can wishlist our game on Steam. You can find the link in the first pinned comment under this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Also, share this video if you think it's valuable. That's it for today, guys. Take care, stay safe, and see you next week.